Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar Update with myself, Dave Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. Today's date is Monday the 25th of, sorry, Monday the 5th of January, I got a bit ahead of myself there, Monday the 5th of January 2018, uh, then today's day and today's time has just gone uh, quarter past 12. As always with the webinars, before we actually go ahead with the webinar, I must have to, have to play you the risk warning screens here in front of you. Uh, they are very straightforward. It essentially states that anything that is uh, I, I go through on our webinar today really is just my own personal views, comments and opinions. It should not be taken as explicit trading or investment advice. So if you, if you guys just have a quick read through of that while I leave it here on the screens, we will then be kick, kicking on with the webinar properly uh, in a, a few seconds time. It's all fairly self-explanatory. Um, for those of you who are regular uh, listeners to our webinar, it's, uh, it's something that is quite standard practice here at CMC Markets, and it will keep our compliance department quite happy. This is just the last slide of the risk warning, it's also the shortest slide, and then we can actually proceed with the webinar itself. So basically what, what, what today's webinar is going to be covering is taking a look at the major move uh, in the Dow Jones and, and, the, and the US markets at the back end of the last week. And then after that, moving uh, on to what's been going on in Europe, um, and about an age overnight and also Europe. So to start, starting back at the start, where it all began as it were, uh, turning our attention back to last Friday at lunchtime, UK time, it was the non-farm payrolls from the United States. Uh, what, we had out of the, what we had out of that was... We had a good set of headline figures that came in, 200,000 jobs were created, uh, exceeding expectations. There's a positive revision to the previous month's number. Unemployment remains steady at 4.1% in, in line with expectations. But, but as always, the devil is in the detail when it comes to non-farm payrolls. And the year-on-year -year annual, and the year-on-year the year -on -year average earnings figure uh, show that earnings in the United States increased by 2.9%. And on top of that, the December figure was actually raised with a positive revision from 2.5% to 2.7%. Uh, so the strong earnings growth really, between the positive revision and the strong January number, really uh, set the ball rolling in terms of traders worried about a prospect of an interest rate hike from the Federal Reserve. Um, at going into 2018, and probably even, even in early, early st stages, of 2018 traders were probably looking towards a three interest rate hike move from the Federal Reserve in 2018 now the now the uh, now the sands have shifted somewhat and traders are now potentially pricing it looking towards a potentially four rate hikes from the Federal Reserve this year so for a long time we've had a ma major rally on the American markets strong rally in Europe and also strong rally in, in Asia and then when the traders get worried Seeing the surge uh, in the, the likelihood of a, of a rate hike from the Federal Reserve um, in, in March and a few more interest rate hikes in 2018, bond yields uh, were, were quite generous as well. That prompted traders to actually exit the, exit the, uh, the equity market. So we saw a colossal sell off uh, in American stocks um, over, uh, on Friday night, over 2% loss in the Dow and the SP. We lost uh, quite substantial amounts in Asia overnight. And here in Europe, we're down, we're firmly in the red too. Uh, so taking a look uh, at what else we can actually have a look at this week in terms of our economic calendar. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the trading platform, you know under the Market Pulse tab, fourth option down is the market calendar. I'll have a quick run through uh, the major economic indicators to keep an eye out for and events this week. And then after that, I'll have a look at the popular, uh, popular markets covering indices, commodities and currencies. And looking at what's been going on price action wise and areas of potential interest in terms of price action. So taking a look at tomorrow, looking ahead to tomorrow, uh, we have retail sales coming out from Australia. We also have Australian, uh, we also have the Australian um, Reserve Bank of Australia, the Australian Central Bank meeting, where rates are tipped to hold at 1.5%. Tomorrow morning we have industrial manufacturing numbers coming out of Germany, uh, early doors at 7 a.m. Canadian trade figures come out at half one uh, tomorrow, um, London time. Turning our attention, well, actually late on Tuesday night, we have all the figures coming out from Australia. And then turning our attention over to Tuesday, sorry, Wednesday rather, we have industrial output early doors out of, out of Germany at 7 a.m. We have trade uh, 
French trade figures coming out at 7.45 Wednesday morning. With house price in, uh, figures coming out of the UK at half eight on Wednesday morning. And looking down to the rest of the session, we have a, we have the uh, mortgage figures coming out of, of the UK at 12, at, 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 out, of the, out of the US at 12 o'clock UK time. And the big one to watch out for um, on Wednesday is going to be the oil inventory figures, which come out every Wednesday at half past three. Turning our attention now to what's going on on Thursday, we have trade figures coming out of China overnight. Uh, keep an eye on the import and export side of that, particularly the import side. Uh, China is a major importer of, of, of raw materials and commodities. And seeing as the, the London market is disproportionately exposed to, to, to commodity related companies, uh, be it stocks uh, in, in the mining sector or be it stocks in the oil and gas sector, uh, they make up a day, disproportionately large amount of the weighting on the FTSE 100. So if you trade mining companies or the FTSE itself indeed, or the Australian currency, the Aussie dollar, keep an eye out for the Chinese trade figures. But we also have uh, we also have trade figures from Germany uh, on, on Thursday morning, um, and then later at 12 o'clock high noon on on um, on Thursday we have the interest rate decision from the Bank of England, but no change is expected there. At 1:15 uh, on Thursday we have Canadian housing starts. Uh, and we also have the we also have uh, unemployment job, jobless claims figures from the United States at half at half one, as we do every single Thursday. Uh, stick with the Chinese theme. Uh, on Friday early hours of Friday morning, we have Chinese PPI and Chinese CPI numbers uh, coming out in the early hours of Friday morning. Once again, keep an eye on the Australian dollar, mining stocks, and also the, the FTSE 100 could be swayed around depending what's going on in the, in the commodity related sector. 7:45, uh, we have, uh, have 7:45. We have a French industrial production uh, coming out Friday morning. We also have a UK industrial, industrial production coming out at half nine, and then later on in, in the trading session at half one, we have Canadian unemployment. So now they've covered the major um, economic events uh, of, of the week. Let's take a look at some of the, the, the popular uh, markets, starting off with the FTSE 100 and having a look at what the price action has been doing. Of where we could potentially go uh, price wise in the next few trading sessions. So, as we can see here from the chart, after re reaching a fresh all time high in the middle of, of last month, the FTSE has been uh, turned sharply lower. It's been pushing steadily lower here. As you can see, the low we, we, we hit to today has not been the lowest level see, seen since early to mid December. So, we are talking about a, about a, about a five or six weeks low uh, created on the FTSE 100. Possibly more, probably, probably more towards a six or seven weeks low. As we can see, as the market was coming off steadily here, we saw a fairly, we saw a fairly uh, steady increase in negative momentum. So as the market was pushing lower here, we saw a fairly swing from positive momentum here on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram. And we saw it turning sharply lower on the MACD on the negative side. So as the market's moving lower, that's been confirmed by the by the steady increase in negative momentum on the MACD indicator. So this is it's likely that this negative mood could last, and if you look, look, look to continue push lower from here, we may find support in in around the 7,278, which which is the area uh, of circling here, which is the kind of late late November lows and also the early December lows as well. And should we move south to 7,278, we could head head down towards the mid September low of 7,195 or south of that. Down towards the April low of 7,088. These are levels to watch out potentially to the downside. But if you do manage to see a bounce back, because we could see some potentially see some uh, some some short covering or even perhaps some bargain hunters enter the fold. If you do see a bit of a bounce back, because we have been selling off now for about two or two and a half and three weeks. If you do see a bounce back, the first area to keep an eye out for potentially could be the 200-day moving average, which comes into play in around 7,000. 455. Notice how the 30 day moving average acts as both resistance and support uh, in December. So it, it does have previous experience uh, acting in the support and resistance fashion. So we could see it again should we move to the upside. If we move north on the 30 day moving average, the next level that you keep an eye for could be the 50 day moving average, which comes into play in around 7,560. Once again, notice how we have a lot of price consolidation. And, and both act, act as both support and resistance in December. So it has previous form, so it may act in, in a similar fashion yet again. 
we would really would want to see a move north uh, up, you know, beyond this this price area here, this red candle here on the 30th of the, of, uh, of January. We would need, we need to see it move north of 7,670 before we can become confident that this negative that this recent negative move has come to an end. Turning our attention now uh, to what's going on on the DAX, the general market, also uh, heavily in the red on the back of of, uh, of the the moves you saw in both in the US on Friday and Asia overnight. So we saw we saw a record high being created in, in uh, last month, but not too not too dissimilar with the first 200. We did see a, fi a fairly fa fast and steady decline ever since then, and the low we, we've traded to this morning on on the on the DAX. Hasn't been seen since September, so it gives you an indication of how, how negative the sentiment is if I hit levels not seen since September. As the market was coming off here quite rapidly, we saw a swift increase in negative momentum. So the MACD indi indicator uh, was, was confirming the negative mo the move to the south. We did manage to find some support. Uh, we did have some, well, this price area here of 12,550 did managed to act as a, an area of price consolidation that acted as resistance at one point and also support on other occasions so this area seems to be an area which for the time being is providing support for the DAX but while we if we move south of that level the next area to keep an eye out for to the downside could be 12,330 notice how we did manage to see some support and resistance in that price action uh, in July and also through September and if you move south of that, the next level to keep an eye out for to the downside could be 12,191. Notice how it did act as resistance in the early in the early September period. Uh, similar to the FTSE 100, if it does the market does turn around, the big kind of metric that our traders keep an eye out for is the 200-day moving average, which comes into play in around 12,757. So. If we, if, I, if, if we are bouncing back and we are going to see a move to the upside, that will, will be the first hurdle the market will need to clear. And if you head north of that, that, that price metric, the next big level to keep an eye out for could be the 50-day moving average at 13,146. Notice how in January the 50-day moving average did on a few occasions act as support. Uh, while it acts as support, that the old support could potentially come new resistance. So keep an eye out for that price there. And we really would need to take out 13,300, this, this price area here, uh, from, from the 1st of February, in order to become more confident that, that, that the negative moves that we've seen recently has come to an end. Turning our attention now to what's going on over in the US markets. Um, just to let you know, folks, as it always uh, with, with, our, uh, with our webinars, I'm going to run through some of the major popular indices, popular commodities, popular currency pairs. If there are any markets you would like me to actually cover, just feel, feel free to type away in the chat box and I'll happily uh, give it a look. So it's a fairly similar pattern on the Dow Jones, whereby the market went on to create a record high last month, but ever since then it's been uh, pushing quite aggressively to the downside. Uh, so as we're pushing lower here, an area that has already come on the horizon is the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around 12, sorry, 25,100. Bearing in mind the FTSE, sorry, the, the, the Dow Jones hasn't really tested the 50-day tested the moving average since September. So it gives you that indication of just how um, how bearish the markets are, have been recently. And notice here back in August and September, on a few occasions, the Dow Jones managed to bounce off of the off of the 50-day moving average, so it did act as support on a number of occasions. So it's possible we could see some buyers enter the fold in around the 50-day moving average. But if you continue to move south uh, beyond the 50-day moving average, an area to keep an eye out for could be 24,535, which is this price area here, which is the early November high, and then also that price price area did manage to act as a bit of support as the market was pushing higher in December. Uh, if the market does manage to, to, to turn around itself, uh, then in order to keep an eye forward to the upside will be 26,104. This price area here is it's a combination of both support and resistance when the market was, was moving higher and lower uh, in, in, the, in the recent sessions. But given that we've come so far on the Dow Jones and also other indices, the move that we've seen in numerical terms is quite large. But we, but we, 
in recently, but, but, but when you consider just how much the market has moved uh, over the past say, 12 months. If you look at say where the Dow Jones was early early February last year, we were talking around 20,200 20, points. And bearing in mind only a few weeks ago, we were north of 26,000. Uh, so I'll just give you an indicator on just how much ground has been traveled in the past 12 months. So when you see sessions like we saw last Friday, where the market was down um, 666 points, it's a big numerical number, but bearing in mind the market did manage to get, uh, gain over 6,000 points uh, in the space of 12 month period. So it's all relative to the to the to the uh, the move that has preceded it. Turning our attention now to what's going on in the S&P 500. Uh, not to use a similar looking chart on the S on the S and the, and the uh, S and P 500, whereby we've had a tremendous amount of gains racked up over, over the past 12 months, and if, and highs were created uh, all all throughout throughout January, but the market did manage to actually have a have a very decent sell off as well, where uh, for the time being the, the market has managed to gain some support in around this price area here, the lows of air of early January at 2,736. Um, if we do manage to break south of this price area here of uh, 2,736, an area of potential support could be the 50-day moving average at 2,721 or south of that at 2,695. And notice how 2,695 did manage to act as resistance on a couple of occasions in December. So these are all potential price areas to keep an eye out for should this negative move on the S&P continue. But if you do manage to actually bounce back, uh, the next big kind of psychological number, um, if you manage to bounce back from here, and you to keep an eye out for to the upside, will be the mid uh, January low of 2769, which is this price area here. And if you go beyond that, the, the kind of psychological number to keep an eye out for to the upside will, of course, be 2800. And if you go north of 2800, we could potentially head up towards. 2,840 because notice how they managed to ha on, on the, on the, when the market was, was moving to the downside in late January it did manage to act as resistance on that occasion. So we've been talking about how equity markets have been coming off. On the flip side of things gold has been pushing higher. Granted gold is up a, up a few dollars up a few dollars a day. When you take into consideration how much how much equity markets have lost the um, the reciprocal upward move in gold really hasn't been that big. It's partially because traders are, are potentially um, nervous. We could see a rate hike from the Federal Reserve next month in the middle of March. And if you look at the price of gold, it has been in a steady upward trend over the past since mid December over the past say, six going on seven weeks. The move to the downside here uh, since the highs that were created in late January, the market has been moving lower. We've seen an, a swing to negative momentum. Negative momentum has actually been increasing, so it's likely that this negative move could continue. If we do move lower in the in the near term, we could be looking head down towards 1326. If we head south of that, we could be looking towards head towards 1310, or below that below that down towards 1300 itself. A big psychological number. But bearing in mind, if you look at this candle here, what's, what's interesting about this is quite a, a, a distinctive red candle here, quite a quite a bearish candle. This was, was from last Friday when traders clocked that there was a jump in average earnings on the January figure and the December figure was, right, was raised higher. And this was the moment when traders went, hold on, jump in earnings, that could translate to higher inflationary pressures. Bearing in mind, over the last number of months, the US dollar, over the last few, very recently, the US dollar index was at a multi-year low. A weak US dollar is likely to feed into the US economy as, a, as a inflation down the line. Higher inflation expectations as, as what's on traders' mind at the moment. And we have higher inflation expectations. Excuse me, we have higher inflation expectations that could lead to higher in, uh, more interest rates than originally penciled in. So keep an eye out for that uh, in terms of, of um, if you are trading gold. If you do manage to kind of shake out of the negative trend that we've been in the last couple of sessions. A break north of 1350 could signify uh, a continuation of the upward trend that has been in since December. So notice how higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, classic upward trend. Now we are seeing the lower low, lower high, lower low. So if we do break south, I'll say at 1326, that could be an indication 
that this upward trend here has come to an end or else it's going to have a fairly decent uh, pullback. So, But if you do manage to break north of 1350, that could be an indication that the upward trend we've been in since, since, since mid-December is going to continue. And a move north of that could bring in the recent high of 1366 in the play. And should we take out 1366, we could be looking towards 1375, which, which is a level that hasn't been seen since July 2016. i take a look now with the oil market. Uh, the oil market has been it, uh, reasonably boring uh, in, the, in the last couple of weeks. After hitting a three-year high of both Brent and WTI, the market has been trading sideways. So this is the market, this is the price of Brent oil hitting a three-year high north of $71 a barrel. But ever since then, notice how it's been kind of edging lower. Not a decisive move to the south side, but a move to the south side nonetheless. One of the factors in that is that uh, output in the United States, thanks to sh thanks to the shale production, has now exceeded 10 million dollars, 10 million barrels of oil per day. Um, output in the United States hasn't been at this level since the 1970s, so it's a bit of a catch-22. While OPEC um, wants to curtail demand and drive the price of oil up, higher oil prices obviously encourage shale producers to get involved in get involved, and, and the resultant of that. Has of course been U.S. oil production is now at its highest level uh, for for uh, since the 1970s in four decades. So notice how we have been got a grinding low here on, on the price of oil. Uh, the negative momentum on, on the MACD indicator is, is rising, so the momentum is is with the bears. If you continue to drift lower on WTI as, on, on Brent oil here, we could be looking heading back down towards 67.26 or even down to. $66 a barrel per itself, and even if you have a decent sell off, it could be looking heading back down towards 65. Move to the upside, big psychological number, $7 a barrel, and then north of that, the recent high, uh, which was $71.38. cents. Uh, looking at the price of WTI now, let's exit that out. Notice how it's a uh, reasonably similar looking chart here. After hitting a three year high here, we have managed to kind of edge a bit lower. Um, the market has been broadly speaking kind of, kind of sideways trading, but slightly, slightly, slightly skewed to the downside. So if we do manage to kind of keep drifting lower here, we could be looking at heading back down towards $63 a barrel here, or, or maybe potentially even low, down as low as 62. And it's only if you get a fairly decent uh, retracement could we be heading back towards the 50-day moving average here at $61 per barrel? And if the upward trend does manage to continue, the next level to watch out for to the upside will, of course, be $67 a barrel. And then, of course, traders like that big psychological numbers, 68, 69, so on and so forth. But bearing in mind, both on both WTI and Brent, the markets have been rising uh, steadily upwards for the last seven months. If you draw a low, you can see here from the, the, lows, in the lows in June last year, it's been a solid seven months of pushing higher. Granted, the, the energy market is quite choppy, and we have seen pullbacks. They have been fairly sizable, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, turning our attention now to what's going on in the currency markets, uh, having a look now at the euro, euro uh, versus the US dollar. We can see here that the uh, the recent. So you can see here that the the the, um, the euro has been in a fairly solid upward trend for quite some time, but we don't. But really, the kind of the really kind of acceleration has come in from the lows in November. You know, a classic example of upper trend: higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and and then we've seen a seemed to run out a bit of steam in the kind of 125 area. Um, I was the wider trend suggests the market is going to continue to move into the upside. But bearing in mind there are potentially now fears around the higher interest rates in the United States. With that, we could see a firmer U.S. dollar. Uh, from a, but I'm also from a charting point of view. What I'm also interested in looking at is that we we're, we're, we're not too far away from the 125 mark up here in terms of price action, and the price has, has been rising steadily the last few weeks. But what I'm slightly concerned about is that if you look at the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, we can see a fairly obvious decline in a positive momentum. And we have a scenario whereby the, the market is pushing higher, yet 
momentum is running out of steam. It suggests the buyers are getting a bit wary. They're running out of energy. They're running out of steam. Running out of momentum. And it could be an indication that the market might just have a bit of a pullback or a bit of a correction. So the upper trend has been in place since, since, since November firmly, which, fit, which fits in with the wider trend going on for quite some time. We, we have seen multi-year highs on the euro dollar, um, but we could see a bit of a pullback. And if we do see a bit of a pullback, we could look at heading it back down towards 124 or perhaps the uh, the late January lows of 124, 123.35 or maybe even as low as 123 itself. But the wider trend is to the upside. So traders will be looking out for 125, which has been difficult to hold above. A break above 125 could then potentially put, say, 126 on the uh, on the, the radar for the bulls. Have a look now at what's been going, what's been going on in the, in, the, in the pound versus the US dollar. As I mentioned, uh, any markets you would like me to cover that I haven't covered, please feel f free to enter them in the chat box and I will have a look at them. So the big picture is this. From March last year, drawing a lot between the lows of March and the lows of August. Granted, we did trade on a few occasions below that trend line in November, but by and large, we have been north of it. So the overall, the big picture trend is still positive on the pound versus the US dollar. Similarly, it's struggling to kind of on the euro dollar. It's kind of it's almost like they kind of run out of steam in uh, in late January. So the the pound here is finding obviously difficult to break north of 143. Obviously, if we move north of 143, we're looking towards 144, 145. These are all levels not seen since June 23rd, 2016, the, the day of the EU referendum here in the UK. But if we do manage to see move to the, the downside in the pound versus the, versus the versus the US dollar, we could find some support in around here. Uh, the lows are just just shy of 140 at 139.78, uh, perhaps even as low as down as low as 139 itself. But we're well above the uh, the 50 day moving average. We're well above the, this trend line support, which has been acting as support uh, on a few occasions over over the last nine nine or ten months. Things are also looking quite positive for the pound versus the US dollar. So I'm going to, I'm going to do euro, euro sterling and then I'm going to do dollar versus Japanese yen. And then we'll look to wrap things up because it's just about coming to the end of the half an hour slot for the webinar. Unless, of course, you guys want to ask any any, uh, any markets you guys want me to look at. So what we see here on the um, broad, you speaking for a few months now, we've seen a broad kind of wider trend to the downside in the euro versus the versus the British pound, but we have seen some decent decent support come in, come into play in around this area here at zero spot eight six eighty nine. And notice how we have, we have managed to kind of push higher here in the last few weeks uh, on the euro versus the US dollar. And while we've, we've been doing that, while the price has been pushing here, higher here, there's been a distinct decline in negative momentum. We've even actually swung to positive momentum now, so it could suggest that the at the um at the the at the momentum and the pressure is now with the bulls. So the first hurdle which we need to we need to clear is this area here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in a zero spot 88.52, which we're just north of that at the moment. And if you go beyond that, we 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 could be looking heading towards zero spot 89, zero zero, and then of course an area we really need to clear to kind of kind of shake off or negate the negative trend we've been in recently will be this price here from the middle of January of zero spot eight nine two nine. And if we move north of that, then we, we could be looking heading back up towards zero spot ninety zero zero. If the market does manage to kind of flip turn over on itself yet again, keep an eye out for zero spot eighty eight zero zero to the downside and then below that zero spot eighty six eighty nine this price here and also these prices here from the lows of both December and also of January. So keep an eye out for um, the last mark I'm going to keep and we look now is the US dollar versus Japanese yen, and then we're going to look to to wrap things up. So I can see here on the dollar versus the yen. Um, over the last few months, since November, really, it's been, it's been in a fairly obvious downward trend. Quite a deep lower low here, lower high, a bit of consolidation, lower low, lower high, lower low. Market has bounced back here. What this, what's interesting about this is that the the the, the, uh, the rally here on Friday, when the U.S. dollar was uh, was very bullish, 
because interest because the possibility of a, of a rate hike seem, next month seem more realistic on the back of the wage figures within the non-farm payroll report. We can see here that the market has pushed higher here, has managed to kind of break, well, trade north of the of the um, of this price action here of the mid November mid January low, but we have dipped back below it again. So we, we're pushing higher here. Uh, the, the, the negative momentum indicator, the negative momentum of the MACD indicator is declining. We've seen a slight creep higher in positive momentum that, that cannot, cannot be sustained. Uh, we really would need to kind of head north of say 111 or possibly even the 200 day moving average at 111 spot 70 uh, before we can actually get be, be, be confident that this negative move that has been in since November has come to an end. If the market does turn over itself yet again, we could be looking heading back down towards 109 and then of course the recent low of 108 spot 28 and if you go a spot below that area of the, the, the recent January low, uh, the next big area to keep an eye out for the downside would be the September low of 107 spot 32. Right, uh, I do want to thank you for your patience and uh, for, for tuning in today. Uh, I've been Dave Madden here at CMC Markets and I'd like to thank you from, from myself and also all of us here at CMC Markets. Um, seeing as you don't have any questions or further comments, I'd like to thank you for your time and please feel free to tune in next week. Uh, have a good day and have a, a good week.